there, my name is Angela Isa. welcome to my channel and I'm glad you stopped by to check out how we made this pumpkin hat. So this is a child size pumpkin hat, Sarah is 8 years old and it fits her just... Right. I'm not 8! How old are you? I'm 7. Oh, and so. when do you turn 8? November, like next month. Next month, okay, so she's almost 8, alright? So there we go. So this hat is just the right size for her age and how I did this one here is I started from this part so where are you sarah cuckoo side from the here from the bottom okay and then i worked up 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 in single crochet okay so that you have oh gosh a trim around that you can fold when you are done okay all right so sarah let me see Is it nice now there we go i worked about six inches and a half and then I started doing the decreases. There's five decreasing spots here that kind of like evenly shape the top of the hat. So over here, when I was almost at the end, I changed color. We made a stem and then there is a curly cues. For you to know how to do the curly cues, you need to watch the video on how to do the curly cues. It's a separate video. Um, it's really easy to follow. You just have to make more chains and you take it from there. So that's it. It's pretty simple. It's quick to do. Only single crochets are used and it becomes very cute little something for your little pumpkin to use for Halloween. <laughs> With a 5.5 millimeter hook, chain 56. First three chains become the knot. So there you have one chain, all right? So you need 56 total. 56. It is time now to join this part with the beginning. However, you need to be careful here how you um, look at your chain because we don't want this chain to twist all around and then later on it becomes all stiff and, and strange to work with. So pay attention to this. You notice that a chain has two, two sides. It has the, the right side, the nice side that looks like a braid and if you turn it around it has it's not so nice it looks bumpy it seems like it has bumps in the middle right so you want to make sure that the right side of the chain is looking to the outside of your of the circle that you are forming right so best thing here since this is a little longer um, you know and it can twist around so what I want you to do is to bring the uh, wrong side up okay and then bring the end here the beginning of the chain close carefully so it doesn't twist you try to grab your chain here now so there it is so the wrong side is looking at you and you're bringing these parts together okay so right with right and then you just try to work around the ends here. Okay. And you join both sides with a slip stitch. There it is. Okay. So here if you go and, and try to stretch, you will notice that the outside of the chain is the right side of the chain. So it's not twisted. Okay. Right after you join with a slip stitch, I like you to put a safety pin right there. Okay? Because that indicates the beginning of the round. And now you do one single crochet all around. And remember that the nice side of the chain needs to be always looking towards you. And again, this is um, single crocheting into the chain, correct? So you want to look at the top loop and that's where you insert your hook. And yes, the loop kind of tends to be a little stretchy and that is not a problem because you do want this to be nice and flexible so that the trim of your hat 
is not too tight around the head. So I am moving on here. I will pass forward and I will meet you at the end when we get back around and back here to the safety pin. Okay? All right. See you there. <clears throat> All right. So here, here, here we go. I am close. <laughs> close to the end to where I had the safety pin. So you have to be careful here that you are not twisted again, okay? So when you started, you were here and then you went and went and went and then as you go, yeah, you get here and suddenly it seems like that the top is in the bottom and the bottom is in the top. So you need to kind of pay attention to that that you twist this around in a way, okay? that here we go that's the top that's why i put the safety pin here that was the beginning of my row and then i went all around okay needs to stay nice and the top to the top okay there we go there it is so you need to make sure that it's not twisting itself entirely all right so you just keep an eye on that Okay, and the only reason I did that safety pin is exactly because of this whole twisting business going on. And then sometimes, as you can see, my, my yarn kind of got looped inside the ring. So what I have to do, let me get it here from the floor. I have to bring it through the loop here so that it is free. There and not looped inside. So just kind of work around with that. All right. So let's finish up, up until right there on the safety pin. Here we go. So what you did, you did one single crochet on each chain. Here we go. Last one. And we are back to the beginning. All right. So you may now take the safety pin out because now what you're going to do, you're going to start inserting the hook inside the single crochets that you just did, okay? So in this case here, this was your joining stitch, so that becomes your next step to go. And then from there, you put you insert your hook inside each single crochet that you did and go from there. All right, so what's gonna happen now? You're going to be cro single crocheting all around this and you're gonna end up here. And then it keeps going, going, going. That isn't really a beginning or an end, a visual beginning or end of the row. You will know that it is um, the next row is starting because you have this string here that shows you where you begin. So you will know that that's, oh, that's going to be a new row. But visually, it's not going to be seen and that's okay because it becomes this one, one piece later on. You don't have to join parts. So that's the cool thing about um, doing crochet in a round like this. All right. From now on, you're going to crochet this on the round and you will go and go until the piece is six inches and a half. I, I never really counted how many rows that is. I simply go by the size. That's all it needs to be. All right, see you there. All right, so here we go. It is now completed from the bottom where we started here up to here. And I do have six and a half inches. So for you to measure this correctly, what I do, I really take the beginning here as my reference point, all right? And then when I go around, I make sure that my last row went just a little bit past it so that I measure from here to here. And then I take my measurement right there you know, there is the six and a half mark. It's right there at the bottom of the chain. And 
it finishes kind of, you know, more or less. All right, doesn't have to be like exact science here. Okay, so this clearly to me is six and a half inches. All right. So from now on, you have to start decreasing the amount of stitches that you have here. And because if you don't this decrease, this is going to go on as a cylinder forever, right? And that's not the point here. We want this to round up so that it shapes ahead nicely. And also in this one here, we will change colors so that we have the pumpkin top. All right. So make sure you have that handy and you will need five safety pins. If possible, have four safety pins of one color and one of different. I have four golden ones and a silver one. If you don't have um, one that is of a different color, just take a Sharpie and mark the top of it really nice and blue or nice and black. And then you will know that that one will be the special one. That's going to be the, 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 first, um, the first safety pin that we are going to use. So for you to decrease, what happens is that you need to do two stitches in one. So I'm going to show you how to do the decrease. Start your hook in the next stitch and draw in a loop. Don't finish it. Insert the hook again in the next stitch. Draw a loop. And this time, yarn over and bring the yarn through the three loops on the hook. So you did two stitches in one. Right away, as you're finished, go ahead and mark this stitch right there that you just did with the differentiated safety pin. Could be of a different color or, as I said, mark it with a Sharpie and keep it right there. All right. Now you're going to do nine single crochets on the next um, you're going to single crochet on the next nine stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, <clears throat> seven, eight, nine, All right? And again, we are going to do another decrease. So here we go. Insert in the next one, yarn over, pull through. Don't finish it. Next one, yarn over, pull through, and this time finish the stitch by bringing the yarn through the three loops. Again, get the safety pin, mark it, all right? Now you must mark these decreases because they are our reference point when we do on and on and on, on where the decrease is happening. We can't just decrease wherever we want, otherwise the shape of your hat is going to turn somewhat awkward. So we got to obey the rules here, okay? All right, next nine again, single crochet in the next nine stitches. One, nine, nine. I decrease one more time. And safety pin. Single crochet in the next nice one, two, all right. In this is the decrease, and again, and through, all right. And we mark the decrease, all right. So, one more to go. <clears throat> Single crochet in the next nine stitches, one, two, nine, very good. Now, decrease one more time. All right, so we marked our first five decreasing spots. All right, so there they are. They are evenly spread around this circle here. It's very important that they are evenly spread out. All right, so from now on, you need to just pay attention to where the beginning of the row is. That's why we marked it with um, a different colored or, um, uh, you know, differentiated a safety pin, all right? Because from now on, what is going to happen once we are here, the amount of single crochets in between these um, safety pins is gonna become less and less every time we start a new row. So in this video here, I'm going to show you the entire process of how to do this decrease. So here we go. The next one, you are still going to do nine nine single crochets in the next 
single crochet in the next nine stitches. I keep saying that wrong. One, three, four, seven, eight, and nine. All right. So here you may notice that you stopped. This is the beginning of, this was your first decrease, which is the beginning of now the next row, the next round, you name it. So what's going to happen here is that from now on, you are going to be meeting these safety pins all over again. And you need to notice that every time when you are close to a safety pin, you're going to notice that you will have to stop simply right before the safety pin, but there will be one stitch in between. So there's the safety pin, there is one just waiting, and this is where you stopped, all right? So here is where we do the decrease again. Okay, so take, take the safety pin off and do the decrease. There and there and done. And now bring the safety pin back. All right, good. So this was the beginning. This was the end of the last row and the beginning of the next one. So, on the first decreasing round, I told you to uh, do nine single crochets in between each decrease, correct? But since we've done that in this row, now when we start the next row, you're going to do eight decreases in between each row. And you will notice that every time that you're done with your eight, you're going to stop exactly in the same space before the safety pin. There's always going to be one free empty chain right there. So you're going to notice that right now. So right now, from now on, new row. So new decreasing row. <clears throat> you will do eight single crochet in the next eight. One, eight. All right. So you see there is one stitch here still to be worked and there is the one that we marked. It always needs to look like that. If you do eight and you land it here, you need to maybe recount and make sure that that you, you pinned your um, safety pins in the right place. But I'm, I'm sure if you're following along with me here, I'm not, I'm positive you're not gonna mess that up. It's, it's kind of like, it's tricky. The, these types of things are usually hard when you're following on your own from a book or something. They can be a little confusing. So there, so there we go. Here is the next decrease and we mark it. Right. So I'm going to speed up the next, uh, up until we get here to the beginning um, of the, to the end, beginning of the next row. The, my my silver pin all right so i think i i hope i explained it well so i'm gonna do one more and then i'm gonna speed up on the next one okay so this is gonna be one how many again it's eight right two four, five, six, seven, eight there we go it always stops in the same spot decrease and pin all right Okay, so I'm gonna speed this up and I meet you at the end of this round. All right, so here we go. This is the end of my second decreasing round. All right, so I met the silver pin. So I'm going to decrease right here. So these were was eight still, eight single crochets. I'm gonna do the decrease there and pin. All right, so now this is the third round, my third decreasing round. So it's since the first one had nine in between, second had eight, this one obviously will have seven. So here we go. One, two, four, five, six, and seven. Right on, see? Then we do the decrease. I'll pin, pinch it myself. There we go. And this goes on now for the entire round. Okay, so um, you work on yours, I work on mine. I'm gonna speed it up and meet you at the end, okay? All right, here we go. And of the third decreasing row, I did my seven 
Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I did my seven single crochets there and I'm meeting the silver pin. So we will take it out and decrease. And then we will pin it again. So round four of my decreasing row. Guess what? How many, how many single crochets in between? <laughs> yes, it's not rocket science, is it? Six. So here we go. One, three, eight six Ta -da! yeah and it's it's yeah it's really exact how the how the single crochets land exactly the right spot before the safety pin and that's important because that will make the hat shape nice and round right that's what we need for a hat all right so keep doing this finishing up this round you will be doing six single crochets in between the safety pins and we will stop again at the silver one all right here we go back to the silver pin and we will do one more decrease and pin it very good now we are going to change color here so that we have the top of the pumpkin all right so grab your brown and actually all i do here is i do one single crochet don't finish it take the brown and bring it through and then you finish your single crochet so that was one single crochet now this one is going to be my fifth decreasing round um i'm going to have five single crochets in between all right that was one single crochet five okay you might want to just tie up because it's an open end all right since you don't need the orange anymore you can go ahead and cut it and tie a knot I do two knots three actually all right tuck it in there there we go so i said five single crochets in between i did one two three four five all right so one more decrease and again you do this throughout the entire round until we meet at the silver spot again all right so this was my beginning my end of my fifth decreasing row all right and from now you might be thinking okay how 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 far do i go with this so pretty much when you have 16 stitches left over all around then you can stop so let's see how many we got so far so that is one that is, you know, my last decrease was done there, so don't count it. Let's start right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty-nine, thirty. So I have thirty. So we still have a little work to do here. So the idea keeps going. Okay. So this now is going to be my sixth decreasing round. So I'm going to have now four single crochets in between. So I just did that decrease right there on the silver pin and now we're going to go for four single crochets one two three four and decrease okay so keep four single crochets coming in between the decreases and i will meet you at the silver pin again all right there we go this is the end of the sixth decreasing round I'm going to be starting the seventh decreasing round and this time we're going to have three single crochets in between so one two three and decrease so keep doing that until we meet at the silver pin again all right this was the end of the seventh decreasing round so let's now check how many stitches we have left at the top so you see the hat the head of the hat forming yeah neat huh okay there we go 
I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So I have one more decreasing round to do. All right. So this time you have two in between. One. This is the eighth decreasing round. All right. Meet you at the silver pin. You know what to do. Two single crochets in between the decreases. All right. All right. Here we go. So now let's finish up the count here. I think we have 16 now, right? Oops. Hang on. This one is escaping. Come on. There we go. Okay, so here we go. Let's count it. <clears throat> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Right on. So I didn't even have to um, put the those safety pins back. That was not really necessary. <laughs> so there we go. Take them out. Okie dokie. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna cut more or less about uh, one foot and a little bit more. All right, very good. <clears throat> So before I finish this one up, I need to do the curly cues and the stem. So for you to make a stem, I like to use a thinner, a smaller hook, five millimeter hook. All right. So go ahead and chain five in brown. I'm using the same brown as the top of the head. If you like to use a darker brown, that's fine. It's up to you. So I do my knot by chaining three first. There is my first chain. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. I join to the first one, to the first chain I made, and I slip stitch. And then here I'm simply going to single crochet on each loop I see, around and around and around. So you don't really have to be doing any counting here. Just go and find the next loop and move from there. It's really very simple. So the beginning kind of becomes a blob, like a blob of, like almost like a knot. <laughs> but in just a little while, you're going to see the tube forming by simply going around and around. Okay, and for this one here, see, there we go. And for this stem here, hmm, I think about two inches long should be enough. I'm getting there. So see, it doesn't necessarily look very neat. It's it's a bumpy type of thing, but that's what stems are. We really want it to have a rough type of look, right? So there we go. Just keep going from one stitch to the other around and around and around. All right, so let me see how long this is. I said two inches, in my opinion, will be fine. That's a little more than two inches, almost three, two and a half. All right, 
I mean, as long as it's not looking ridiculously long, it will be about this big, right? So that looks, and it, there will be a little bit of this um, stem coming into the hat to fasten it. So I think two and a half inches is good. So you go ahead and close it up. There we go. Take a needle for you to bring, weave in that end. You only have to weave in one end. Usually the end I, I stop is the one that I, oops. Oh, come on. So usually I weave in the end that I just finished. So what I'm doing is I just go around each each stitch or not even that, two or three stitches, tighten it up nice and tight and then I bring it through this skinny tube I made, kind of like in the middle of it and I pull it out, there. Okay, there we go, there is your stem. Okay. So the next thing that you need to make this pumpkin happen is uh, make the curly cues. So I'm not going to show you how to do the curly cues here. This is how they will look. However, they will be longer for this one. So go to my video on how to make a curly cue. The link for it is on the screen. And make sure that you do a curly cue of 25 chains. So I'm going to work on my curly cues and you work on yours. And then we will meet and kind of put this whole plant together. All right, see you then. Now here we go, I have ready my stem. I showed you how to do that one. Now here are the curly cues. For you to do these, you need to watch my video that's called how to do a curly cue. And I do a tiny short one there. So when you go do yours, make sure you make curly cues of 25 chains. 25 chains. Watch the video, the link is on the screen, okay? And they're super easy to make, don't worry, super easy. Um, I'm gonna use three, if you wanna make more, that's up to you, should be fine, but three for me here is good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put them together, almost like a bouquet. Try to bring them more or less around, around <clears throat> the stem. There we go, here, okay? Now, yeah, this is a little finicky here, okay? So we have to just kind of jiggle this around. Now I put this inside. Oh, actually, no. Hmm. All right. All right, so first thing, you have to close up the top of the hat slightly. Okay, so how you're gonna do this, you get your needle, bring in that yarn, and just bring the yarn through, just through each chain, each space here in the top, kinda in and out the next one. All around, right? In and out the next one, right at the top. Okay, until you get all around. There we go. And then you pull the string and it will shut the hole. All right, but before we shut the hole completely, we want to put the curly cues and the stem in there. Okay, so keep it more or less open like that. Then take the curly cues and the stem, make kind of like a bouquet with it, right on, all right, something like that, and bring it inside the hat, okay, now leave it sitting there for just a moment, uh, make sure that you take this um, 
piece of yarn here and bring it towards the inside of the hat. Just don't take the needle out quite yet, okay? Now, you have to grab all those strings in there and just turn your hat up inside out. There we go. Completely turn it inside out and let it just sit here, like that. Now, rearrange the curly cues and the stem nicely. So there should be about a little bit of each stem and a little bit of the, I'm sorry, a little bit of each curly cue and a little bit of the stem right here, okay? This one here I think turned a little too long. So pull out somewhat. Yeah, there. Okay. Now what I do is I take this long string here and I fasten the hat the, the end, the opening around, around the curly cues and the stem, nice and tight. And then, keep it nice and tight, I, wherever really inside the brown, I insert once, keep it tight, and then I insert it again and go through the loop to make a knot. There we go. So that should fasten it. However, if I stop here, I could easily still pull out the curly cues. So what I do now is I just simply go from one, from the ending, from the side of the opening that was tightened up into the curly cues, into the stem, kind of like wherever, to the other side. And then again, I grab a little bit from the hat into these parts to the other side and just keep going like that back and forth doesn't really need to be neat and orderly because this is the inside nobody's gonna see this <laughs> you may want to actually already um just get rid of all the the open ends here just go ahead and cut them off because we don't have to weave them all in okay and then go again into one side and just go through oops i lost it yeah so do that several times until you think that the curly cues and the stem are nicely fastened okay make sure that each one of the curly cues receives at least one stitch with this with this um, end here. So that's why it's important that you leave it nice and long because we definitely need that, right? So there we go. Just keep playing around with it. All right, so I go turn it around once and kind of tug, tug on it. If it feels like, oh, this is not gonna come out, feels nice and snug, I'm good with that. Then it's done. Um, I do one more here to just fasten, to make a knot. There we go. And done. Okay, these ones here were when we joined and I don't worry about weaving them in either. I just cut them a little shorter. All right. There is this edge here, which is the end. Yes, that one needs to be, um, I'm sorry, it's not the end. That was the beginning of your work. Yes, I do weave that in. And I simply go around here. Don't tighten it up too much right there. Okay, and then I go back maybe. Make a knot. There we go. All right. Now this one here, make sure that you bring it into the wrong side here and just tuck, tuck it in along the edge of the hat. Oops, sorry about that. And then once in a while, I just go ahead and do a loop to make a knot. Then I go a little further and I keep going and going. I'll do one more knot here until my string is too short. And then I have to 
just cut it short. Okay. And there we go. Cut it short here. And there we go. Hat ready. So this is for a size, um, uh, you know, eight, nine, ten year old kid. All right, so here it is. Nice and cute. Haha. <laughs> there we go. This is a simple way of doing a pumpkin hat. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed making this project and please show me a picture when you are completed. I would love to see that. So subscribe, don't forget. I always post new things, so keep up with my work and I would love to see your work as well. Thank you.